Hello everyone and welcome to Coding with Tom. Microsoft has just released .NET 8 Preview 6. In this preview release, they've come a lot closer to delivering on the promise of uniting Blazor Server and Blazor WebAssembly projects. You are now able to designate specific components that you wish to have rendered either using Blazor Server or Blazor WebAssembly, and you can combine and mix and match. In this tutorial, I'll show you how that works. And I'll also show you another new feature called form model binding and validation. Let's take a look at that first. In the release notes, they say Blazor's new server-side rendering mode can now model bind and validate HTTP form post values. Well, what is this new server-side rendering mode they're referring to? Well, what that really means is when you create a new Blazor web app, neither WebAssembly nor Blazor server rendering using Signal R that we're familiar with is enabled by default on any components. What this means is we can use Blazor components, but what happens is on a GET request, the Blazor components initial state is rendered out, and then there's no interactivity after that. So you only get a non-interactive Blazor component. Now what they've done here is they've extended the ability of the edit form component to actually provide a little bit of interactivity without using SignalR or WebAssembly by adding this supply parameter from form attribute. And what happens is when edit forms post, they're able to go to that second step of the edit form actually processing and validating the data and then producing a result. Because there's that post action, we end up with having a little bit of interactivity with the edit form component specifically. Let me show you what it does. Let's go ahead and make a new project. And I'll use the Blazor web app, the new unified template that they've created. And I will put this in a form binding project. Now notice they've added this checkbox in this preview release for use interactive servant components. If you check that, it will enable the use of server rendered through signal R, the equivalent of Blazor server for specific components that you designate. So I'm going to leave that on because I want to show the difference between doing it that way and doing it with this new edit form option. So let's hit create. Let me show you what's in this template. Let's run it. Before we go over the edit form, I want to show you the counter and fetch data pages. The counter page is a functional page that has a working counter. And this is a server rendered counter using Blazor server only for this counter. Let's check out the code for that page. So if I go over here to pages under counter, you'll see that it's our typical counter example, which has a value of the current count bound to the current count member variable and an increment count method that's bound to the click of the button. So this is a typical Blazor component. We're used to seeing this example in our Blazor server and Blazor WebAssembly projects. But notice the attribute render mode server at the top. That's because only this page in this entire example template is using Blazor server. The other pages are not. In fact, if I take this attribute off, it's going to break the counter in a sense, and I'll explain why. Let me run it. So if I go over to counter and I hit click me, you'll see that it's not actually working. What happens is that the counter with its initial values are rendered out to the web browser. However, when we click the button, there's no signal R message going back to the server to actually update any of this nor is this a web assembly that's running in the browser. So it's not actually going to work, but it did render out its initial state. And that's what they're talking about when they talk about the new server side rendering mode. Now it's not that it's broken. It's just, there's a limited set of things you can do now, which might actually be very useful using blazer components in this type of mode. And I will show you that in their weather forecast example and also the edit form example.
let's take a look at the weather forecast example first. So if I go over to, um, well, let me run it. You're used to seeing it fetch the data and show you temperatures. So let's take a look at that code. It's a little different from .NET 7's example. There's this attribute called streaming rendering. So we're also gonna get our Blazor component only rendered initially once, and then there'll be no interactivity. But it does a very good job of rendering the component in stages in its initial display. So if you notice, we have this forecast, if it's null, we'll show our loading message. And then once forecast is no longer null, it'll render out a table with all the data. Now, what they did is they put a fake delay in here just to slow down, you know, to emulate what would be a slowdown of the loading of the weather forecasts. So you wait a second and then it runs. But by the time this entire thing is done, an entire page has been streamed to the browser and the entire initial state of this component is rendered in plain HTML in the browser. Now this could be very effective for like a product catalog or some loading of data where it's not highly interactive, but you just want to, you might have to wait for it to load. So if I go back to fetch data, see it does that loading. It was there for a second. And then once the loading is done, the same web connection is still open. And these additional uh, DOM elements are loaded, which then replace that loading message. So that's what this weather forecast example is showing you. So this is a good example of using this new server-side rendering mode. Now let's look at this actual form model binding that they're discussing here in these release notes. Okay, let's go into pages and I'm gonna add a new component. I'm gonna call it form binding. And this is going to be an edit form. So the edit form needs to be bound to a class that stores its data. And this example I'm doing is a registration form that has first name, last name, and email. So I need a class that can hold those things. So let me go to add one now. And I'll call it register form, register model. And I have the code here. So it's a simple model class that has first name, last name, and email. It also has data annotations for validation. The first name field is required, so it's the last name and email. This is the maximum length for first name and last name, and then email has to be in the format of an email address. Let's go back to the project, and I'm gonna add a new Razor component called form example. And in here, I'm gonna paste the code that I prepared. Now, right away, you'll notice there's a missing object called register model. I have to add a class for that. So let me right click my project and add class register model. And I have code for that as well. Our form is going to ask the user for a first name, a last name, and an email. And the data is going to be stored in this model. We have data annotations here for validation. All three are required. The first two cannot be more than 100 characters. And the last has to be in the format of an email address. Now, if I go back to form example, You'll see at the top, I have my Blazor edit form, which is bound to the register model object. On a valid submit, it calls the register method. So those two things are down here. It's the register model, which is of type register model I just created. And here's the register method. Now the register method is only gonna have a adjustment to this form filled out variable, just so I can show that it's actually functioning. Now here's the new attribute in .NET 8 preview 6 called supply parameter from form. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow that initially rendered edit form up here that normally would have no interactivity 
to have one additional step of activity when you click the submit button. It's going to process all the validation and allow you to perform the functionality in register upon posting the form. And then when that's done, it'll re-render the page out, which will include, in my case, having, since I changed this form filled out to true, this if statement will execute and will print out thank you for registering. Before we can use it though, I need to add it to the navigation. So you'll see this is slash form binding. Copy that. And if I go to the shared area and go to the nav menu, I can add another entry here for my particular page, which is form binding. I'll copy this. And I'll change the link to form binding. And I'll give it a name, form binding example. Okay, now we should be able to run this. Let me click my new link over here. You'll see our form comes up. So the initial Blazor component edit form was rendered properly. If I put no data in and hit create, you'll also see that the validation was done properly. And that's because when we hit create, it posted back to the server. Uh, the model was filled with these values, which were blank and the edit form was able to do the validation, produce the proper messages, and then return the screen with the proper validation shown. Now, what I'm gonna do is put in some valid data. This is now gonna post again, and it worked this time. It says, thank you for registering. What this did is that model was bound again on the server using that special attribute. The edit form worked. And this was all able to be done without any Blazor server. In other words, no signal R. And this is certainly not a web assembly running on here. So this is sort of similar back to just regular Razor, but they've made it compatible with the edit form Blazor component. So this lets us do simple forms without having to have Blazor server or Blazor web assembly. There's nothing stopping us, however, from running this as an actual Blazor server component using Signal R if we'd like to. And I'll show you how we do that. It's very simple. I just go back to the page and I eliminate this supply parameter from form option because this is the option we needed when we didn't have Signal R and server side rendering working but I have to tell this page that it's actually going to be using server side rendering now. So, but I can do that. I can add an attribute render server, render mode server. And now this page is going to be rendered completely with signal R. So all interactions are going to occur just like any normal blazer server project on this page. So if I hit the form binding now, I can do some test data. Let me put a bad email in. And you can see that it's actually working. And this is using the standard Signal R and Blazor server that we're used to. Now let's take a look at probably the coolest new feature in this preview release, which is the ability to blend Blazor server Signal R and Blazor WebAssembly components in the same application, even on the same page. To do that, I downloaded the sample that they had here on the release notes when they discuss it uh, down here, and I made some alterations. So I'll load that project up and show you an example. Okay, here's the project. Really, it's a solution that contains two projects. We have a Blazor app project at the top, and this is responsible for displaying the standard Razor components and any Blazor server Signal R rendered components. Then we have a client project that's solely responsible for any WebAssembly components. Let me show you what it does before I explain how it works. 
you can see here there's two list components shown. Uh, these show three items by default, and if you put an item in the box and hit click me, it just adds it to the list. So these are interactive components. The one on the top is WebAssembly, and the one on the bottom is SignalR Blazor Server. Okay, let's go back to the code. The first thing I want to show you is the program.cs in the server app. And you can see here that under add razor components, we have the additional add WebAssembly components and add server components. This allows for the embedding of WebAssembly or Blazor server components on the pages. And also down here, we have the two render modes that we're going to have to let us mark a component as either render mode on the server or render mode WebAssembly. Now let's look at the component itself and I'll look at the server rendered one first. That's list component server. It really is just a loop over a collection of strings that creates an unordered list in HTML with an input that is bound to an add item string and an on click for this button that's bound to this click add item. So on initialization, it adds the three default items. And then when you click, it adds the additional item that was typed in the box. So back on the index page, it's able to load that component here and use server rendering for that. Now in this client project, the exact same code is down here under list component wasm.razor. It's identical code actually. But this program.cs shows that this is really just compiled for WebAssembly. So it's just a WebAssembly that has just that component in it that we're able to reference in our above project. And that referencing is automatic here when we refer to it here as list component WASM. So you can see we're getting very close to the Blazor United idea of having WebAssembly and server components mix and matched on certain portions of the screen or certain parts of your application. Now, the one thing they're still working on is smoothing out the transition between pages. Like for example, I hit fetch data and then home and move around between components. There's a chance that there'll be some full page loads and a little bit of clunky URL slashing and things like that. They're working on smoothing that out right now. And they mentioned they've made progress, but it's not ready. That's probably going to be in the next preview or one of the next previews. But this is definitely where we needed to be to start coding Blazor United projects or what we used to call Blazor United. I'm excited for this and I hope you are too. And I think Blazor has a really strong future based on what I'm seeing here and the improvements I'm sure that we'll be seeing over the next months. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell.